Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Fantastic, sitting outside, been doing some things with my plants that time of year where I'm digging through things, seeing what needs to be repotted and what doesn't. And in the process, I picked up my Maxillaria tenofolia, the coconut orchid, and realized, hey, this is an awesome plant. Why haven't we talked about it before? I get asked about growing orchids a fair amount in my videos and I just never really dive into them because it's usually about the Vanda orchids that people see which are not what I would call a beginner friendly orchid like, not at all they're a pain in the butt to grow at least if you live someplace where you have to keep them inside for part of the year not something I would ever recommend to someone who's new to orchids however the coconut orchid these little gems I think might be one of the best orchids for beginners talk about why. Oftentimes when people hear orchid they think of a plant that's going to be something that only plant experts can grow or that need advanced care. Just complicated, very complicated plants which sometimes oftentimes is true if you're just comparing them to an average house plant. But there are several types of orchids that I think make wonderful house plants for people who are at least familiar with the basics of house plants as far as light and water airflow and those things go there are a plethora of options so over the next few months occasionally i'll do a video recommending different really easy orchids and this is the first one i want to talk about it might be my favorite of the so-called easy orchids to grow if you love house plants you like some green in your house you enjoy some texture this is a great option for you the maxillaria tenofolia is typically a low elevation orchid but it can be found up to nearly 5,000 feet in elevation and when we know things like that about a plant that tells us something. What that can tell us is that the plant has some versatility to it. And versatility or adaptability with a plant usually, not always, but usually equates to being a more easy to grow plant. There are a lot of different videos out there and a lot of different blogs online that talk about how to grow them. Some people grow them in sphagnum moss, some people grow them in just straight up orchid bark, and uh, I see varying levels of success with both. Again, versatility, adaptability, easier to grow. You can take varying light levels. You can grow them from a lower light, now not dark, but a lower light to a pretty bright light. I would avoid direct sun just to be safe that could scorch the foliage, but they can take a decent amount of light. The less light they get, the longer and stringier that these leaflets are going to be that come up out of these beautiful pseudobulbs, but they might be less likely to flower for you in lower light. This orchid usually flowers around, I want to say March through April. They put out little red flowers, have some spotting in them. There are some that have yellow flowers. It's called the coconut orchid because those flowers emit a wonderfully fragrant coconutty smell. I think it smells kind of like a pina colada, like a little bit coconut, a little bit fruit very pleasant to have around. Maybe it's not the great big showy flowers like we see on the Phalaenopsis orchids that are at all the big box stores or on those Vandacious orchids like I showed in the beginning of the video, but they smell wonderful. They're little and they're cute and the foliage on the plant that remains throughout the year when the plant's not in flower is also just a winner. I mean look at it. It just it's such a neat looking plant. Nice grassy texture that shoots up out of those pseudobulbs. It's beautiful. They have a nice clean look to them. I personally prefer to grow this orchid in bark chips despite a lot of people saying that they swear by sphagnum moss. I, that's going to depend partially on where you live because they are not going to want things to be too dry as far as the air is concerned, humidity that is. So if you live someplace that's really dry or outdoors where there's lots of airflow, then maybe sphagnum might be a good option for you. For me, eh, not so much. Where I live with the humidity and then when I have them inside, they're just gonna be more prone to rot. Go ahead and pull this out of its pot so you can get a better look at the plant. I just had that sitting in that blue pot, which somewhat hid some of the fun characteristics of the plant. Similar to a lot of house plants, I fertilize them during the active growing season. I just use a well-balanced all-purpose fertilizer that's made for orchids or I'll use a quarter dose all-purpose regular houseplant fertilizer on them. I tend to do that probably I would say maybe mid-March through mid-September. In the winter months I don't do very much with these plants. And that's really the only thing about the maxillaria that I should make note of is that they do like a little bit of a dry rest. There are some orchids you have to cut their foliage off, throw them in a closet for a few months and bring them back out to get them to bloom. And some orchids where their roots and their shoots only produce at a certain time of year and that's it. That's, that's the only opportunity you get to have them grow. The Maxillaria tenofolia, 
while they do need a dry rest, it's not like they're just going to cease existing for you and performing for you if maybe you forget. There have been plenty of years where I have left mine out a little bit long into the season, so they didn't get as much of a dry rest as they should have, and they still performed well the next year and still bloomed. But typically, October through, I'd say early December, that's usually when I try and reduce their light just a smidge and reduce how much water I give them by about, I'd say 50%, if not more. I just cut back on those things. That will usually do the trick as far as giving them their dry rest, which when you think about it, we kind of already do that for most of our houseplants, don't we? I mean, with the exception of people who have their like aeroid room set up with humidifiers blasting all over the place and maybe can keep their plants going in an extreme state of active growth all year, which I, I mean, I have a space like that, but I don't need it for this orchid. I've kept it in the house on plenty of occasions outside my growth space and it does fine. Just kind of let it rest and chill for a few months just like you would a normal house plant where you're taking them from outside to inside or just the seasons have changed, the lighting's different, you reduce the watering and you reduce the fertilizing. You let the plant just kind of rest a little bit. These maxillarias are very, very easy to propagate, mainly through division. They're not gonna be easy to propagate as far as seeds grow. That's not really the case with any orchid. There's a whole process you have to go through to try and get them to grow through seed. Usually needs to be done in a laboratory type setting. These grow fast enough that they'll fill out a pot fairly quickly. This one, I would say, easily doubled its size within about, I might say two years, doubled its size. And you know it's about time to do a repot when the shoots start to kind of go limp out the side here. This is an orchid that actually would like to climb. They look excellent if you mount them on a wood slab, hang that on a wall, and they'll crawl up it. And all of these little pseudo bulbs will cling on and you'll have like a little staircase of just cute little green balls going up your wall. Anyway, so when this comes out, when it starts to droop like that, you just take a pair of clean sanitary snippers and find the growth point that you want to cut out. Like with this one, I could cut this really far in here. See how that's coming out from all the way inside there? You just go in, make a clean cut, and I have a new plant. Each one of these pseudobulbs actually has their own root system. So if you were to peel back these papery sheaths, you can find a root from every single one of these that goes all the way down normally. So I could go ahead and, in theory, cut each one of these off and put them into their own little pot. I'm not going to do that though. To continue propagating this, I would take some damp long fiber sphagnum moss, which you can find at pretty much any big box store, and just get that wrapped around the base here, or put it into a pot with that moss, and let it get rooted out. And then once they've rooted in, I would repot them into an orchid bark. That's my preferred media for growing them. They're an orchid that has finer roots, so I do prefer to use an orchid bark that has smaller chip size to them. The big bulky ones, sometimes they take a little bit longer to get going in those. Or they just don't have the same stability, I should say. They'll be a little bit more floppy. It can take them longer to really get established in there. I've also had plenty of success growing the maxillarias in LECA, if that's the way you like to grow your orchids. A lot of orchids can be a pain to grow and like a, those little clay beads just sometimes don't wick up quite enough moisture for those fine roots. But again, this is an orchid that's very sturdy and pretty forgiving. And when I've had them in Lekka, they didn't really skip a beat. They did fine. If I were to want to mount this so I could hang it on the wall, again, very simple. Get some damp moss to have behind there onto that wood slab a little bit under here. String that around the wood slab and then you just hang it up and then give it a soak. Probably I'd say once a week, if not twice a week, just the slabs dry out faster. Mounted orchids dry out quickly if you don't have them in a really humid environment. That's why I don't do a ton of them just because they're a little bit higher maintenance when it comes to keeping them hydrated. So that's nice. It's always good, fun to have options with our plants. There are lots of ways you can grow them. You don't have to have them in a special orchid pot. They don't have to be in something clay. You can keep them in plastic. You can keep them in ceramic. You just have to be kind of aware of your growing environment. So if it seems like the plant's staying wet for too long, signs of that are going to be yellowing and browning foliage in pseudobulbs. That means the plant's too wet then you might want to consider moving the plant over to clay or if it's in sphagnum, getting that sphagnum out of there, and just allowing the plant to dry a little bit more in between waterings. Increasing airflow and temperature can help with that as well. The main thing is just to get the plant dried out, which again, that's a pretty standard rule and method of growing any house plant, right? That's not just an orchid thing. I don't want people to be, don't be afraid of orchids. Give them a try. Typically, I let this orchid dry a good amount in between waterings, which is actually a kind of 
contradictory to a lot of what I've read online about them over the years. Most people say keep them wet. American Orchid Society says don't let them dry out in between waterings. So again, I think that that has to do with variables in climate and just the conditions that the plant's growing in. For me, allowing it to dry in between waterings is what does this plant best. And during the winter, when I have this inside in a cooler location, I really don't water it very much at all. It gets a drink of water just about once a week, pretty much the same as any of my other house plants. Uh, there are signs that the plant's being underwatered, which th some of those are present on mine right here, which is great. I did that on purpose just so I could show you. Not really. And I don't know if I mentioned this, these little green ovals here, those are the pseudobulbs. Typically we want these pseudobulbs to be round and plump without any wrinkles. You see the wrinkles that are in there? Can you see them? Yeah, you see how some of these are kind of wrinkled and shriveled? That's from me letting them dry out a little bit too much. Typically you'd want this to be more bulbous and smooth, but the plant's okay. I've had this one for years and it's doing great. It flowers for me every single year without me having to do very much of anything for it. Like I said, I just grow it like I would most of my other house plants. So if you have some wrinkly shriveled pseudobulbs in there, it doesn't mean the plant's dying or that you're necessarily growing it totally wrong. Sometimes that just happens. And with some orchids, they will shrivel and then you water them and they'll plump back out. That hasn't been my experience with the tenifolia, with the coconut orchid, but if it's been somebody else's experience that it will plump back out, comment down below, let me know, because maybe I just haven't given it the proper chance because I'm not concerned about the wrinkling. So I've never given it any extreme soaks to try and plump them back out because I think it looks it looks fine just like this. It's okay, the plant's healthy, it's happy. I just, I haven't gotten hung up over some wrinkly pseudobulbs. At least not this level of wrinkle. If they start to get like an odd shape to them, like they're starting to kind of squeeze close, that's, that definitely means they need a lot more water, but as long as they're still firm, everything's probably just fine. Anytime we have a house plant that has these thin, long leaves on them, they're going to be prone to having some tip burn, maybe some yellowing foliage as things get old and die out. You can just cut that off. It's not the end of the world. I know we're in a plant world right now where we see these pictures of just pristine, perfect plants all the time, but it's not reality. Sometimes tip burn happens, you can just cut it off. There are ways to avoid that happening. Again, same thing like with any other house plant, make sure it's not in a direct path of any drafts, whether they're hot or cold. You just don't want wind blowing directly on the plant. That's gonna blow the moisture out of the foliage and cause it to dry more quickly. Maybe your humidity is exceptionally low, usually around 50% humidity, and these are fine. In my house in the winter, it's usually about 40% and I don't have any issues with leaf burn or tip burn or just dried up foliage, but it can happen, especially if you have a lot of airflow or drafts. And while this one is ready for a repot, I'm going to go ahead and let it have its winter's rest first. And then when things are warmed up in my grow space, probably around mid-December into January, I'll go ahead and give it a repot. I might move it into a basket. These look really nice in hanging baskets. You can use the wood slab baskets or just a plastic one. Of course, if you're using plastic, you need to be more attentive to how the plant's being watered because the media is going to dry out differently, more slowly than it would if it were in a clay pot or in a wooden slab basket. I always like to talk about whether or not a plant's toxic to your pets. I can't find anything. I didn't look that hard, to be honest, but I can't find anything that just straight up says yes or no. So I'm gonna say what I always say, which is just keep your plants away from curious mouths just to be safe, toxic or non-toxic. Every single body can have a different reaction to something that could be totally fine or harmful. But better safe than sorry, because cats, I can tell you, cats, this foliage, they absolutely love the leaves on here. So it's definitely something to keep away from your cats. Cats will destroy that beautiful green fine foliage. Isn't it pretty? I just, I love them. They're a very common, easy to find orchid, but there's just something about them that's just fun. A lot of orchids become common and sometimes that can become a little bit boring just because you get so accustomed to seeing them but this is one that i never get tired of it's one that i've always enjoyed just because i know that they're going to be okay i enjoy their growth habit i think they're cute they look really nice indoors they have a really fresh appearance orchids are fantastic there's so much diversity and variety within them and uh, i don't like how afraid people are to grow them if you picked up an orchid from a big box store a phalaenopsis and you killed it that doesn't mean you can't grow this orchid. Those orchids, oftentimes you're set up for a disaster with those. They're not usually potted properly in a way that would be good for most people's homes. They've been forced into their flowering and you know pumped full of hormones a lot of the times. Sometimes you just set up for disaster with those orchids. But this one right here, it doesn't cost very much. It grows a lot. Sure, again, not those 
big, beautiful flowers like you get on the Phalaenopsis. But that's okay because they have such nice texture to them. It's just a great house plant. It's becoming popular to grow out of house plants that are astray from the norm and require a little bit more care. And this orchid doesn't even require that much of anything extraordinary. You really can pretty much grow it like a typical house plant, but make sure you give it that rest, which again, the rest, pretty normal with a lot of house plants. And there are several other orchids that I want to talk about that I think people should give a try, that I think people would have more success with, like the Brassifolia nodosa, another excellent orchid. I'll probably talk about that one next. It's a fantastic orchid, really, probably one of my favorites actually as far as just being a great orchid for beginners comment down below especially you orchid peeps this is a good time to go ahead put in your two cents let us all know what some of your favorite orchids are to grow that are really easy it would be a great introductory orchid to get people a little bit more accustomed into growing them tips tricks suggestions with the coconut orchid always appreciated it's impossible to cover everything in one video I wanted to keep this one very simple because I'm not, I don't, the goal of this isn't to scare anybody away from growing a plant. You need to know this one right here, it's not that complicated. If you think you can't grow orchids, but you do well with other house plants, this is a good one to give a try. They're really sturdy. Okay, that was more than enough. This video, like I said, it didn't need to be long and complicated. I just, I needed to gush and I need to put it out there. Start growing this orchid. It's fun. It's simple. It's easy you won't regret it unless maybe you kill it it happens people kill plants sometimes don't be too hard on yourself the good news is it's not a super expensive one so you can try again i don't think you failed at growing a plant until you've killed it at least three times you got to give it at least three tries learn from your mistakes and keep growing i don't think that that's going to be a problem with this one though shouldn't be they're pretty simple all right i hope everybody's doing well having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye